let's find all the zeros of this polynomial function um, and then try to factor it completely. So in jumping into this, I noticed we have a nice polynomial function. Let's first test some possible rational zeros, but before we can test them, let's list out what all the possibilities are. So possible rational zeros. To find these, what we're gonna do is we're gonna list out uh, the factors of the constant, so six, over the factors of the leading coefficient two. So the different ways to factor six are one times six or two times three. I think those are all the nice integer ways to do this. Don't concern yourself with the plus and minus right now. Ways to factor two, well, it's one times two, it's a nice prime number. All right, so all the possible rational zeros are when we set these up into fractions, into rational numbers but the order matters. So it's factors of six over factors of two. So I can go one over one, two over one, three over one, six over one, one over one, two over one, three over one, six over one. When I put them over one, it's equivalent to just one, two, three, and four. All right, next up, we can put these each over two. So one over two, that's a new one, but two over two is equivalent to one, which is already in our list. So I'm not gonna list that again. 3 over 2, that's new, so I'm going to include it in our list. But 6 over 2, 6 divided by 2 makes 3, which is already in our list as well, so I'm not going to include that a second time. So this is our comprehensive list. It's both the positive and negative for each and every one of these, though. So positive 1 and negative 1 are both possibilities. Positive 2 and negative 2 are both possibilities. All right, so we want to just jump into checking these using synthetic division. Um, where I would start is with all the integers um, and avoid the fractions for the time being. I would go through all the positive cases and all the negative cases of these integers before I tested out the one half or the three halves or the negative cases of those, um, just because I want to avoid fractions and you're probably in the same boat with me. All right, so let's test out a couple of these. The good news is this goes quickly. The bad news is sometimes you get them wrong the first time through. So let's just, you know, randomly, let's try negative two. So I'm gonna take the coefficients from our function, f of x. It's gonna go up above here. All right, two, one, negative 13, six, didn't skip over any powers of x, so I don't need any extra zeros as placeholders. The two comes down, then we multiply, negative two times two makes negative four. Then we add, uh, one plus negative four makes negative three. Back to multiply, Back to add, multiply, positive 14, add, we get 20. All right, our remainder is 20, which is not what we're looking for. So that means negative two does not work out as being a zero for this function. No big deal, we'll just move on, try another one. So let's try a positive two. So again, same coefficients, two, one, negative 13, six. Two comes down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Okay, this time we did get, a, did get a remainder of zero, which is what we're kind of looking for. Um, the good news is, you know, that we find that one doesn't work. That works really quickly, and that can be very important just to figure out this didn't work. Let's move on to the next thing that hopefully will work. All right, from here, what we want to do is we found out that positive two worked as being a zero. That tells us that x minus two is what we just divided by. When two goes out here, x minus two is our divisor. And we're gonna multiply this by the quotient. So reminder, we can find the quotient by looking at these numbers at the bottom, right? This goes as a constant, the number right next to the remainder. This is x to the first and this is x to the second. It just keeps counting up as you kind of move to the left. So our quotient can be two x squared plus five x minus three. Um, plus a remainder of zero at the end here. And we need to factor this. Um, we could run back through and try to find more rational zeros um, by looking at factors of three over factors of two. But when you get down to a second degree polynomial, a quadratic, hopefully we're comfortable enough with our factoring skills that we can just jump into factoring from here on out. So in focusing on that, I'm gonna go ahead and calculate a times C, so two times three is gonna be six, which I write off to the side here. This is A times C, like AX squared plus BX plus C. And I'm gonna list out all the different ways to factor six. 
It can be one times six or two times three. Not a lot of ways to do that. Now I'm looking for, and I'm running through the AC method on this, I'm looking for the pair that subtracts because this is a negative and makes a five. So over to the side here, I think we can have to go with six minus one makes five. And it's because this is a negative or a subtraction here that I'm looking for the pair that subtracts to make five. If this had been an addition, I'd be looking for two plus three makes five, but it's subtraction. Okay, so the AC method, how we're gonna go through this is, I'm first just bringing down the X minus two, saying that's not part of this factoring that I'm doing now. This first term is gonna come down, so two X squared comes down. We're gonna split apart this middle term. We're gonna rewrite it using one and six as coefficients. So it's gonna be one X and six X. The minus three is gonna come down at the end. Now we have to be careful about these two terms that these are like terms. So if I combine them back together, I wanna to get a positive five X, that middle term from you know, that previous step. So I have to make sure that the signs work out that if I combine these together, I get positive five X. So I think it has to be positive six minus one to make five, positive five X. Okay, from here, we've split this up strategically. So we have four terms. So we're gonna use factor by grouping to continue on with our factoring for what's inside our brackets. So X minus two comes down. Now inside our brackets, we can say, well, those first two terms, they both have an X in common. So pull out an X, that'll leave us with two X minus one. And then the last terms, we have to have a two X minus one inside that set of parentheses as well for factor by grouping to work. So we're gonna have to say these have a three in common, a positive three that'll come out in front of our set of parentheses. And you can double check if you redistribute this, sure enough, we get six X minus three. All right, to finish up our factoring, what's inside the big brackets here? Well, what's inside the parentheses, that's a common factor, so that goes in one of these sets of parentheses. And what's out in front, the X plus three goes in our other set of parentheses. So we have just factored our original function completely. We've got them all down to X to the first powers. Now all we need to do is pick out what are the zeros with each factor. Well, X minus two, we had a zero at positive two. With two X minus one, this may be a little bit more difficult to see, but it's gonna be positive one half. Works as a zero. And if you didn't see that, just go off to the side here and say, well, I wanna know when does this equal zero? Let's solve it down after we set it equal to zero. And sure enough, we are gonna get our X equals one half, the same as what I posted over here. And finally, X plus three, we're gonna use negative three would be a zero there. I plug a negative three in for this X, it makes this factor equal zero. And since everything's multiplied together, it makes the entire function equal zero. All right, so we found all of our zeros and we factored this completely. Right here is our factored form of this, uh, this original polynomial f of x. So I hope this helps out. Um, list out all those possible rational zeros and then just jump into starting to test them. Again, I, I try to test all the integers, both positive and negative before I get into the fractions. Although, as you can see here, one half would have worked because it did turn out being a zero at the end. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck as you're trying to factor polynomials and pick out all their zeros.